Today I'm going to share with you the new DIA and IM Mobility features in Peex X Pro. In Peex X Pro, we put a lot of work into supporting 40 proteomics. That means looking for peptides in the retention time dimension, M over Z dimension, intensity dimension, and also the ion mobility dimension. Several different instrument vendors have their own way of dealing with ion mobility data, such as FAMES, SWATH, DIA Passive, and MSE. In PeaksX Pro, we support all of these. Also, we're able to support DIA data with ion mobility. So, in this presentation, I'm going to show some of the new features in PeaksX Pro that help deal with this type of data and also talk about the improvements that we've made in our quantification in order to limit missing values that help with this type of data as well. So in PeaksX Pro, we've made massive improvements to our spectral library search. And one of the ways that we've done this is make an adjustable text format spectrum library. So for example, here, you can see that you can bring in a spectral library from any source that's compatible with our library system and then bring it up here in a viewer. And then from that point, you can then export that library out in a Peaks format so that it can then be used within the software. Also in this video, I'm going to go through one of our newly supported ion mobility types, which is FAMES. FAMES uses the concept of compensation voltage in order to extract different types of peptides from the mass spectrometer in order to improve separation. It's been shown in several different studies that this method is a great way to extract more different types of peptides from Orbitrap data. It can also be very helpful for quantification because it's been shown to improve precursor resolution. So by combining DIA analysis and ion mobility mass spectrometry, we're able to improve quantification significantly. This is because we're able to improve peptide separation and also improve reproducibility. For example, here in this study where where three different proteomes were spiked into a Timstoff experiment, we're able to fully separate the human, E. coli, and yeast proteomes, even though they were expected to come out at completely different ratios, and still get excellent proteome recovery. An important thing I'd like to point out in this is that we're also able to limit missing values across the different samples. As shown here, you can see that we're able to keep missing values below 1% in each of the samples. Let's take a look at a DIA and IM mobility setup. In this case, we're going to use FAMES data. In this project here, what we have is we have three different data files with three different compensation voltages or CVs that have been loaded in in order to get the most coverage of the proteum as possible. In this case, we're only using a subset of the original data. This data set is actually a DDA data set, which is being used to create a spectral library. In Peaks, you can create a spectral library from any DDA data set with a PeaksDB identification result. To do that, you come here to the identification result, select an FDR cutoff, and then apply that. And then you can export a library by just going to export inspector library and it will create a spectral library for you with this button. One of the great things about the new Peaks library is that it's available in text format. Here you can see in Excel what the library looks like. Here you have the M over Z, the normalized retention time for the peptides, the peptide sequences, and the peak lists. And also if you're using IM mobility data, it will read in the IM mobility details, in this case the CV values. In Peaks, you can actually bring in any text format library with the library viewer. Then open, and here you can view the details of your library. We can see all the peptides, some different statistical charts, the annotated spectrum of the library peptide, and the matched ions. Okay, now let's look at setting up a DIA project for our quantification. So to do that, you go up to the top left-hand corner, go File, 
new project, and start to load your data. So in this case, we have two conditions with three replicates each. So we want to select all the data and click this button to create a new sample for each file. In this case, we're dealing with some Orbi Orbi HCD DIA data with a trypsin digest. And click this button and then copy whole project to copy those parameters to the whole data set. And click workflow selection. And here you have two options. So you can go here to the spectral library search to set up a library search with to set up the search with a library we set up previously. All right, here that then we can just set the parameters. And notice that we are already have our library configured. Then we have some options here to specify length, mass or charge ranges if we like. Then as well, we could set up a protein database for protein inference and continue to quantification. And here all you have to do is set up your conditions. So we set our air tolerance, select samples one, two, and three from condition one, four, five, and six are from condition two. And then one of the things that's new in PeaksX Plus is we have the ability to auto detect the retention time range um, by looking at the difference between the retention time of the features during the search. And it will automatically attach our library results. And click finish and it will start the search. Once the search is done, you'll end up with a project tree that looks something like this. In it, you'll have your library search results and some quantification results. Just to give some background on this experiment, uh, this is just a subset of a larger uh, DIA uh, FAMES experiment. Here we're looking at a few different replicates of samples with five nanograms of protein versus 50 nanograms of protein. In order to see how the software is able to replicate the ratio. Here we can look at the identification results what you want to do is you come up here to the top, click the FDR button, pick a FDR cutoff, and then you can also set protein and unique peptides per protein filters. All right, and then you can go to the peptide tab to see details about the different identifications. Notice here that the result page looks a little bit different for DIA data with a spectral library search, where you can see the mirror plot here showing the spectrum from our data set and a spectrum from our library, as well as the different library matched ions down here below. Then here in the LCMS heat map, you can see where the peptide feature occurs according to the yellow line, which is the acquisition scan. These of different fragment ions associated with the peptide here below at the precursor profile. One other thing I'd like to note here is that we have an extra column for the ion mobility details, in this case the CV values, so we can see where we're getting better identifications in terms of the voltage. Okay, now let's take a look at the quantification result. And then here in the quantification results, you can see that we have what we expect with this data, where the 50 nanogram data is highly upregulated against the 5 nanogram data. Then you can come here to the protein view, Let's see the broken down heat map that you would expect to see for our many peaks quantification result. And that's all you need to know to get started with DIA data in peaks. To try a demo, please visit our website, bioinfor.com.